Hello everyone, Jyoti Malik, the founder of CRO agency Blue Bagels. Today we are going to talk about a very important trend that needs to stop in the CRO and experimentation space. We are going to talk about why it is important to stop cherry picking metrics. This is a trend that I have seen growing more and more in the industry in the last couple of years in order to call the false winners as the real winners. Now let's understand what cherry picking metrics essentially means. This is essentially the selective and biased extraction of data or information for analysis or the conclusion of the experiments. What it essentially involves is choosing specific data points which suits the desired narrative or the desired conclusion of the experiment while disregarding or ignoring other relevant data that may contradict or challenge that conclusion. Let's understand it from the practical examples point of view. All right, we are going to go through some examples and the scenarios where selective goal bias can distort decision making. One very common aspect of this is where I have seen is that add to cart metric goes up, but the conversion rate metric goes down or vice versa, right? What exactly should we do there? If the change is made on the product page and the add to cart goes up and conversion rate goes down, do you, you tweak the narrative of the test in a manner that, okay, the change in the product page was supposed to be impacting the add to cart metric and not the final conversion rate. Hence, let's declare it as a winner. On the other hand, if the add to cart was go has gone down, but conversion rate has gone up, the narrative again could be tweaked to suit the desired conclusion in a manner that, okay, the final objective was to actually impact the conversion rate. So irrespective of what has happened on the add to cart metric, let's declare it as a winner. Another example that we have seen, for example, in here is that let's consider a change which is made on the product page again uh, with the hypothesis that this should increase the add to cart rates all right and this could very well be for example through a very simple example of making a sticky add to cart button or making the add to cart button in a in a certain fashion right we can uh, we see the numbers and we see that add to cart numbers have gone up drastically and declare it as a winner right there and then. But what if that particular change also led to a big time increase in the abandonment of the cards and fewer actual purchases, which is again the decline in the final conversion rates, right? Um, so in these scenarios also, a lot of us actually choose the narrative which suits the desired conclusion and this limits attention exclusively to just one metric while ignoring the broader perspective. Let's take another example. We make a change on the landing page and there is an increase in page views, but not the final conversions. But what is the final outcome which was expected out of that change, right? Uh, do we ignore the click-through rates ahead in the funnel? Do we look at the final conversions? Or we say that, okay, the page views has increased, the change which was intended is making sense. So ignore all the bottom of the funnel metrics and call it a winner because the page views have increased. And one more interesting extent to which we try to which a lot of folks try to call their tests a winner is by further segmenting data to prove that one of their tests is a winner. And, uh, so one example in this category would be, for example, we are running a test on Hero Banner. The hypothesis was set as that adding an XYZ element will increase engagement and thereby the conversions because of the improved value proposition and the better brand communication. On the overview level, the test is, let's say, um, coming to be flat in terms of conversion rate. And we, the, we further slice and dice the data to segment it for the users who interact with the banner itself. 
and by segmenting that data of people who interacted with the test element or not the variant turned out to be contributing to more conversions and thus the test is actually proven to be a winner is that the right approach um so essentially the overall primary and secondary metrics were flat but the segmented user base is where the test is seeming to be performing better and is declared a winner right so all of these examples we have seen a few scenarios in which in the experimentation and the cro space we try to tweak and analyze the results to suit it to the narrative and increase our kitty of winners delivered what why it is happening and what is the exact impact of it this is Roma Santiago from Experiment Nation. Every week we share interviews with and conference sessions by our favorite conversion rate optimizers from around the world. So if you like this video, smash that like button and consider subscribing. It helps us a bunch. Now back to the episode. So essentially let's try to understand that the heart of cherry picking is the confirmation bias, obviously, because we want it to suit our desired conclusion. But doing this is leading to the biased insights in order for the data to support the preconceived narrative it is very harmful because it risks strategic missteps because it provides an incomplete picture of the user behavior right it leads us to the miss of real core issues and the opportunities which can still remain hidden if the metrics are selectively analyzed um so this is a very risky practice brands and businesses need to understand more and more about the right analysis of the tests and the experimentation and be very sure of what should be the desired metric under focus for any experiment now what to really do about all of this right the very first step comes down to determining the primary goal primary goal has to be chosen before the test goes live and that is determined by making the hypothesis as specific as possible by understanding the user behavior and of course what has come out of the cro audit to really define the scope of impact the change suggested will make and on which metric it need not be necessarily conversion rate for example a change made on navigation or a change made on the search will not lead to an impact on the final conversion rates essentially so what is your primary goal should be a function of what your hypothesis says and what it will lead to in most of the cases this is the north star metric for the business but not necessarily for all the changes that you are going to ab test um like we mentioned not all the time the primary goal is the conversion rate so outside of the key metric which your hypothesis incorporates that the change will impact the other secondary metrics should also be set up to provide and understand the additional insights this will lead us to better understand the user behavior to figure out why users are behaving in a certain way or in a desired way or differently if they are behaving differently um and then of course having this clarity of primary goal and the secondary goals will also lead us to derive the iterations of the change the test that we run so this is how it is going to help us to consider running additional tests to validate the findings so this is the primary step first defining the hypothesis very clearly and the metric that it is going to impact 
that is what is your metric based on which the test should be analyzed for or to be concluded based on then setting up the secondary metrics in order to further understand the behavior which will lead to additional tests having said that statistical significance is something which should not be missed and we you should not jump on the gun based on just any number right what is really important for a robust analysis or derive any conclusion of the results is to make sure that everything is statistically robust on two fronts first sample size and second confidence intervals of course you always have to ensure that sample size is sufficient for meaning anal meaningful analysis if the sample size has not been met it will more often than not will lead to misleading results second after that is the confidence intervals it might happen that your sample size has been reached within the first 3 days of starting the experiment but the confidence is not there yet so calculating confidence intervals to understand the range of possible outcomes is very very important one more thing in here is that it might also happen that sample size is also reached confidence is also reached within a week of starting the experiment but still suggest uh, consider running the test for a, a longer period of time say at least two business cycles in order to incorporate for the seasonality and the behavior shift that can happen on different days of the week or days of the month so these are very important aspects in order to avoid declaring any test as a false winner and then there are other factors also which will always be there influencing the the performance of the test right and one very important aspect here would be to look for the trade offs there might be for example a change that increased the number of users who start the checkout process but these additional users might be less qualified leading to a overall dip in the conversion rate etc now so this is in line with the previous example that we just discussed about in being able to increase the at at to carts but not the final conversions because the change led to actually more abandonments than less right so these trade offs are very very important to be kept in mind in order to understand how the primary metric decided is also influencing the north star metric of the business if the primary metric is not the north star metric itself um and then finally investigating further using data to understand why the metrics are moving in a positive directions using the surveys the behavior data the user testing and session recordings heat maps etc to really understand why the test is behaving the way it is behaving um now one more very interesting aspect that we have been seeing in the cro and experimentation space is which platform is to be referred to is it ga4 for the analysis of the test or the ab testing platform itself uh of course both these tools provide with details insights into user behavior and using the both tools together is what is what can provide a complete picture of the cro efforts but always on always we need to keep in mind that we are not again slicing and dicing the data to an extent in which we are trying to um find the winner based on our desired conclusion right um so we have to ensure that we are not going to cherry picking by segmenting data more than required um so it has to be a complementary exercise to look at the analysis and the user behavior and journey by using ga4 and the test analysis tool as well but not any one in particular is recommended
All right. So this was um, about cherry picking metrics in the CRO and experimentation space. I hope this was useful. Just to reiterate, um, the very important aspect in all of this is to have a clearly defined hypothesis followed by a clear definition and of course take the buy-in from the all the involved stakeholders as well to have the primary and secondary metrics decided and basis that given the sample size is reached, the confidence interval is there, the business cycles are achieved basis then, then look at the numbers and how further investigate how why the test is performing the way it is performing and what it has led to the user behavior in, a, in terms of a change positively or negatively, right? Please do not select a metric which suits the narrative of the desired conclusion in line with the confirmation bias that we had before we had started the test. It is completely fine for us not um, to find out that the test has not yielded an uplift, the desired uplift. A failed test is also a winner in a sense that it gives us a lot of learnings and insights and ideas about what could be done in a better way in a in a new way in a in a fresher and gives a lot of fresh perspective to what um how differently this can be tested all right thank you so much this is romo santiago from experiment nation every week we share interviews with and conference sessions by our favorite conversion rate optimizers from around the world so if you like this video smash that like button and consider subscribing it helps us a bunch